Hi, welcome to Next Path's Mindfulness Bites. This is week six. My name's Priya Jindal, and I'm the founder of Next Path. I'm really excited you've been joining us and leaving comments on what's been working for you, what you've incorporated into your routine, what you're trying, and what you're excited to try. Uh, today we're doing week six, and we're talking about four different things. You may have noticed that we've gotten into a longer set of of practices. So I'm not going to be doing all of these. There's four of them today. That could be an hour plus. And uh, I certainly want to respect your time. So today I'm going to be talking about these four things. The first one is exercise. Exercise has amazing benefits, as everybody knows, and it can be as simple as going for a walk. We talked about exercise last week when I did a little bit of cardio for you. Um, and there's lots of, of videos online, YouTube, Fitness Blender, one of my favorite companies uh, that provide free workouts, including the scientific seven minute workout. That takes obviously less than seven minutes. Um, and therefore, if you could, you could even do it twice and take less than 20 minutes. You can find lots of stretching routines as well. So stretching helps us, like in week one, get rid of some of the tension we're carrying and recenter because it uses our it distracts our mind and and recenters us to focus in that moment. Exercise, though, writ large, has lots of other benefits, including improving your longevity and decreasing depression. Uh, coupled with healthy nutrition, which is where the cooking comes in, it can really feel like some self care. Uh, to exercise well, I also think that you have to be pretty disciplined in that. You don't want to injure yourself and so you have to focus on form and it's really hard to do a squat and have your mind wandering when you need to be focusing on how straight you're holding your back. I know with with reverse flies I struggle with that. Now on to cooking and nourishing food. Uh, those of you who know me know that last week or the week before we made um, a parfait. So taking care of ourselves by making ourselves small snacks is certainly helpful. But the same goes for big meals that we can also share, which enhances our social connections. But things can be really great. So cooking, you can find really quick recipes. This week I've been making myself a summer squash salad. It takes me exactly 10 minutes to make, and that's because it includes some marination time. Um, it's easy, it's super healthy. I always feel way better about what I've had uh, once I've had it. And it makes me feel like it's something I can share. Uh, and that's a really great place because social connection helps us feel more engaged in our communities. It helps us have more meaningful connections. There's tons of research regarding the benefits of social connections. The other thing is that when we do something nice for other people, we feel happier. And if you're sharing the food that you made and they're excited about it, uh, that's happiness all around. So the last two are yoga and meditation. Yoga and meditation are really important for controlling our wandering mind. So the wandering mind is also something known as the, the default network. So this is sort of where your mind goes when you're not focused on something. A lot of us spend a lot of time in this place, up to 30% of our time. So the challenge here is that when we're really excited about something, we actually go into a flow state. So for those of you who follow some of the other stuff I do on the organizational side, I talk a lot about deep work, uh, something that Cal Newport, a professor here at Georgetown, talks a lot about. So this is the idea that when you are doing something that pushes you to your cognitive limit without other distractions, you enter a flow state. It is actually very similar to meditation because you're doing the same thing. You're really focusing on one specific thing. That helps your brain create new connections and quiet the wandering mind connections. The wandering mind is something that actually makes us really, really um, distracted and we don't actually enjoy that state. And yoga and meditation both, by virtue of their focus on breath, and in the case of yoga on movement, allow us to focus our minds. What's really incredible about this is that it continues long after your practice. So if you continue a daily practice, even if it's short, you'll start to see the impact on your brain and your focus for months afterwards. Uh, and those increase over time. So uh, there's a whole bunch of apps for, for meditation Calm, Headspace, any of those are great. You can also find guided meditations online. Tara Brack, a very famous mindfulness coach, has a lot of information on that as well. And she has stuff available on her website as well as YouTube. There's also uh, the type of meditation I do, which has a short video, it's five minutes, uh, regarding following your breath as well. 
that link can be found in our comments. As for yoga, again, hundreds of free YouTube videos on yoga. You can divvy them up by time, by what you want to work on, etc. There's Yoga with Adrian, probably the most popular YouTube yoga yogi, and uh, she does a monthly schedule of videos, so you don't even have to plan. It's already prepared for you. I hope those help. As always, I'd love to see what you've been up to, what's been working for you, and what you'd like to see more of. Once again, a reminder, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and we'll have week seven being posted on Sunday. In the meantime, and until next time, take good care, be well, stay safe.